Hi, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> what a fun way to start Labor Day. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Technology is a wonderful thing, and, and I do like technology, and I try to commit myself to understanding, immersing myself, and being fluent in the language of technology and in the actions and the behavior and the life of technology. And sometimes I just sort of get things flipped on their head. It's fantastic that one can take and use a platform like Zoom and be able to stream it live on Facebook and in streaming it live on Facebook to be able to also use my tools that I have accumulated as part of my journey as a speaker, as a Toastmaster, as a coach, as a mentor, and as a human being. And all of these things that I'm doing are really, in a sense, a part of why. I'm a, uh, let's just say that here it is, Labor Day 2022. Now, the history of Labor Day actually goes back to the late 1800s. I do know one statistic that I was looking at back before the official Labor Day holiday came to be in the 20th century. There was a time when the average American worker, and please understand work then was a far more physical thing. If you were not in the country farming and doing the work that is required in farming, including handling your livestock as well as your crops, maintaining a home, raising a family, serving in the community, and doing all that was a part of life in Americana in the late 19th century. You were in cities, and most major cities had everything from textile mills to garment manufacturing places to woodworking facilities to steel mills and to coal mines in the mountains of West Virginia and Kentucky and places like that, there is this thing about labor and it involves hard work. And the average workday for the American worker in that particular time, regardless of whether in the big city or out in a more rural area, was at least 12 hours per day, six days per week. Now think about that, 12 hours per day, six days per week. There are some people that tell us that our labor laws are in need of modification and that there are already precedents that have been set in many countries, particularly in Western Europe, where they actually work fewer days per week and fewer hours, but they have found that the productivity levels are considerably higher. But again, I think that also depends a great deal upon what is the standard livable wage, what are the costs of living, and that includes not just owning a home, but being able to provide for the needs of your family to get the medical care you need. Labor is something that all of us, I think, were designed to do, and I think labor can be a great thing. And then there's, of course, sadly, a lot of us who spent our lives laboring, perhaps in jobs we wished that we didn't have to work in, because I know for myself personally, I got to do some of the things that I wanted to do that I dreamed of doing and had an idea of doing when I was younger, coming out of college, getting married, and then establishing, settling, and putting down roots, and finding a home, and there is much that I look back on that I didn't do quite well, and I sometimes got in the way of what truly my dreams were. Other people sometimes got in the way of those dreams. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, I'm an individual that can tell you that I'm very thankful that I am here today with you on Facebook Live, streaming to you on this day number six of John's 77-day video challenge. Again, my thanks to all of you who follow me, all of you that have been supporting me, all of you who are still wondering, hmm, what's he going to talk about today? And of course, the central core message of my 77-day challenge is 
built around my theme of I never noticed and of course my power word for living resolve. I'll touch on that somewhat, but today I want to talk a little bit more about the fact that on this holiday, there are things we do which would be perceived by some people as labors, but they are labors of love. And I also want to wish all of you a happy Labor Day, a prosperous Labor Day, but I'm also very conscious of the fact that statistically, some of the longest work days of the week and of the year for people in retailing our Labor Day. Labor Day, as far as the retail industry is concerned, for the most part, is a wide open, typical, normal, busy day. And it's even more significant in that there is an uptick of shopping by retail customers because there are picnics and barbecues and activities and fun things taking place. There's traveling on the road. There are people on the highway visiting with friends, going to the beach here in Florida. Perhaps maybe they're going to Disney World, or maybe they're traveling to the mountains in the Appalachians, some of the places that I like to go. The whole thing about Labor Day is that for some people, it is a holiday, but it's a day where they do a lot of the stuff they can't do otherwise, and they take advantage of the extra day. And if they're lucky enough to, maybe they can actually use the day as a day to rest from their labors, literally and get a recharging of their personal battery. <laughs> By the way, speaking of my personal battery, say good morning to my friend here. I, I found this in Dollar General. Cost me $5. Somebody said, John, you got mugs coming out the yin-yang in your cabinet. But I liked it because, number one, it was orange. Number two, it's a jack-o'-lantern, and I happen to be a fan of Halloween. I just like the colors of Halloween. No, I'm not in a Satan worshiper. Stop that. No, I'm just a guy that enjoys the fun of uh, the colors of Halloween. It's, it's whimsical and it's playful, but uh, let's get back to something that I wanted to chat with you about today briefly. Labors of love. Labors of love. What are your labors of love? Talking from purely a professional perspective with the gifts that you've been gifted with and the opportunities that are presented to you, it would be nice if our labors of love were actually the things we love doing that also help to provide and supply us with resources so that we're able to have a quality of life. It took me until I retired in 2013 to get into a position where I could begin to examine the possibility of doing labors of love. That being said, I didn't get off to a very, very good start. This process has been sort of a process that has crept along slowly but surely since 2013. In November 2013, when I retired from GEICO, I was 63 years of age. I was not even eligible for Medicare. I wasn't certainly eligible for Social Security, but I was able to draw a pension. And with the help of pension and whatnot, I was, uh, my wife also was retired and drawing pension. We were able to make ends meet just fine. We arrived at that point where we would start living and drawing on Social Security and have Medicare for our insurance. We didn't do a very good job of saving money. What money we did have, we invested in things which turned out to eat the money up and wound up actually making us, for all practical intents and purposes, other than the fixed income, we were broke. During that process, I began to awaken to the reality that there were things that I could be doing, and hopefully they would be things that would be monetary in nature as far as building and creating an income, but they would be the things that I would love doing. And my first love really is the love of public speaking. And I wanted to be a professional speaker, but I wasn't quite sure how to make that sort of thing happen. And part of that journey, that process of finding my way to this labor of love that could present to me a mechanism for also having income for my labors. It's a process of meeting and getting to know people and trying things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. And I'll be truthful with you. The greatest strides and advances that I've been able to make in this field of professional speaking podcasting, starting to and in the midst of writing a book that I have plans to have published before the end of this year, sooner rather than later, 
and also being involved as a mentor, as a coach, as a team builder, as an individual that has a marketable set of skills and a message that is unique in its niche enough that there is a following that would in fact follow me and would pay for and come to me and depend upon me and rely upon me to be a trusted expert. I made the most progress, interestingly enough, since that fateful day in June of 2019, when the greatest friend that I ever had on earth passed away. The legacy that she left in me, the qualities that she planted in my life, the influence that she had on me, really basically turned me inside out because coming out of a college, I was uh, a somewhat self-centered, well, maybe very much self-centered, centristic, egotistical at times, but just very selfish individual. And as I had talked about these various things in the previous days, as we have been going through this 77 day video challenge, I was reminding you that uh, you can't really be selfish when it comes to the service that you bring to people. You have got to have a kind of an engagement that says, I want to know more about what people are doing. Getting to know more about what people were doing and beginning to realize that the greatest relationships that you build are those for which you get something wonderful from those folks, but you are able to give them something wonderful at the same time. In these last just over three years, the doors have been opened. Now, there are other things that have taken place. My son, of course, got married before my wife died, but now he's the father of two girls, so I am a grandfather. You know this already. We've talked about it. There's the people that I've met in Toastmasters and the sphere of influence that Toastmasters has had upon me and all the wonderful Toastmasters family that I have, not just here on Facebook, but on LinkedIn and throughout District 84 and in other districts, uh, District 36, for example, where I have a very, very dear friend, immediate past district director, Bonnie Maydick. The friends that I have out in District 3 in Arizona, who are a part of the Agua Fria Toastmasters Club, which is based in the greater metropolitan Phoenix, Arizona area. The contacts that I've made out in the West, particularly in Washington State and Oregon, and even Dan McGill, who's a member of Society Speakers in London, England, and was one of the semifinalists at this year's World Championship of Public Speaking. I've had the pleasure of meeting some of the greatest world champions that you could ever meet. Darren LaCroix, obviously, most recently, just finally getting to be in his company personally. Now, I can tell you that an individual that had an important part in my life and stepped in and encouraged me to speak my truth and to cast my vision was Greg Valentine, past world champion. One of the first world champions I ever heard years and years ago when I was just beginning my Toastmasters journey was Dave Brooks. And Dave Brooks is the guy that has the Texas tuxedo that I still like to talk about to this day. Ed Tate enjoyed him so much. Got to meet him in Tampa a few years back. A astonishingly good speaker. Michael Long. Way, way back before I met any of those guys, when I was just beginning to develop my chops as a leader, and I was what was then called an area governor, one of my clubs in the area was the Osceola Toastmasters. The area, by the way, was Area 13. <laughs> of course, I've also had an Area 51. <laughs> no, no aliens here. But in Area 13, one of the clubs was Osceola. They're located in Kissimmee. They were meeting in the Kissimmee Courthouse. And there was Michael Ont, a world champion from way back. Still one of the most amazing personalities you could ever meet in this line. Or just You get the opportunity to meet these great individuals. And you begin to realize that these individuals are casting into you their vision, their purpose, their mission, their mission. And at some point, you have to begin to realize, am I laboring in the things that I love 
because labor is not necessarily an intensively hard thing as much as it can be something that we actually rejoice in doing. And by the way, the word labor <laughs> is used in so many references and everything. For example, respectfully said, I'm glad that I am not a woman because in my opinion, women, particularly mothers and the process of labor in childbirth, guys, we just don't have, we, I don't think we have the stamina, the guts or the ability to go through it. It is an, an, it's an indescribable thing unless you're a woman and a mother and you've been through it. And I marvel at my daughter-in-law because she has done it twice and she is still one of the strongest women that I have ever met. She takes a beating during the process, but she bounces back and she's got this resolve and this resilience. And one of the things I discovered too about the work that she does with her online Facebook video store where she sells merchandise and streams live while selling it is that she truly loves what she does, but it's intensive and it's labor because she not only has to get this stuff, open it up, sort it out, then present and sell it and close those deals on TV, but then she must take and properly put it in its place, then go through the packaging process because everything about the sale includes not just buying the article, but also the shipping and the handling. So when she is not on the air selling her goods, she is actively packaging and getting ready to ship. My son, Donald, who works remotely from his home for a major corporation as a client services specialist, is there with her. He helps in the babysitting. It's an amazing framework. Here's mom and dad, both gainfully, actively employed, very good, teaming as a couple raising two beautiful daughters, caring for a four-bedroom house, doing all the other things they do, including active in their church and being just productive, positive, quality people. And I'm not bragging up to say that these are my kids. Nah, 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 my kids are better than your kids. It's not that. The point is they love what they do. There are days when they're not always happy with the way that works, but they still love what they do. And the same is true for all of us if it's a labor of love. So what are your labors of love? And my labors of love, obviously, are having the opportunity to talk to you, the opportunity to work on my book, the opportunity to create and do things and to get out there and to share messages that I think are life transforming. In Toastmasters, it's the opportunity to serve others and watch them succeed. I thoroughly love the leadership track in Toastmasters because through it, working as, for example, a club officer, I get a chance to serve with a great team of officers, what we call our club executive committee. But I also get a chance to watch many of them who are far less experienced in Toastmasters than I am rise and grow and become stronger and more confident. And that confidence level also is translating into greater success personally and professionally. Then there's the opportunity to serve in a district officer's capacity. And as a division director, I get to work with a team of four of the best area directors I've ever met. And these individuals in and of themselves are game changers because they work in regular jobs and do hard work and make a tremendous impact in the community and in their lives. But they also then give a tremendous amount of themselves into the clubs that they're a part of and serving, and then turn around and serve other clubs through being area directors. They're part of my team, my division council team, and we have a good time being together. I have a team that I work with, the two of the most incredibly talented ladies in the world, and Leslie Laforte and DJ Durante. Leslie and DJ are my partners in my podcasting for the District 84 Public Relations team, working with Mike McLean. Working for Mike, our job is to produce podcasts. And by the way, we've got podcasts in the hopper ready to go. There's been some website work that's been done. So the podcasts have been held in the queue until everything on the website is done. And it would be important to point out here something else. Some of you are saying, well, I'm not seeing as much going on with Toastmasters District 84 as I'm accustomed to. Well, you may not realize this, but for those of you that do, you get it. We had 
a lot of our leadership shot through and through with COVID-19 because they went to the international conference up in Nashville and they came back home and many of them were sick. Some were especially symptomatic. Others were asymptomatic. But when you get COVID, it'll be thankful it you know, it used to kill people and it can still kill people, but thank goodness. Now, if you've, you know, you got the antibodies and whatnot, you're, you're at least in a position where you can fight it. And, and in so many ways, it kind of reminds me of the flu because flu shots are a common every day to day thing. Uh, and so now we've got this new thing that we have to really be on our best behavior about, but when it hits, it knocks you flat on your back. And frankly, you don't feel like doing anything. So labor becomes something that is uh, torture. Uh, these are, these are, but anyway, these are the labors of love that I enjoy doing. This is the thing that makes the whole concept of celebrating Labor Day so special to me. Before I even came on the air this morning, one of the first things I did was I sent a couple of Facebook posts and then I texted a couple of people. I wanted folks to know that I was thinking about them. I even took a few moments for a company that I do a side work for, and I enjoy it very, very much. The majority of the team are based in Miami, but they do have team working remotely around the state and some satellite offices as well. I just wanted to wish them a very happy Labor Day because their offices are closed today. And deservedly so. These are dedicated, hardworking people. Some of the hardest working, most dedicated people I've met, and yet extraordinarily unselfish and very powerful in their family approach. When you can do something and enjoy doing it, look forward to doing it, get up every day excited about what it potentially can do for you, you bring something to that mix as you're going through the process on a day-by-day day by day basis, doing the work and also making connection with the people that are a part of the work or part of the center of influence that you have in doing the work, you're bringing a smile, you're bringing joy, you're bringing delight, you're bringing excitement, you're bringing enthusiasm, but you're also bringing a dedication and a passion to give them the best that you can possibly give so that their lives too can benefit from it. it. Are the labors that you're doing in your life making a difference, not just for you as far as your quality of life, but are you casting wonderful blessings into the quality of others' lives? The whole thing about labor is that it can either be mundane, drudgery, I remember a guy who used to say when I was working for a company, at the end of the day, it's just eight hours. It's just eight hours. Really? Well, if you total up in your life working five days a week with vacation time periodically built into it at eight hours per day for a period of 40 years, and all you have to say for it is it's just eight hours. And when you retire, you're just glad you're not having to go to it anymore, but you're also not doing anything to carry that life forward and do something special for others, or maybe find that something that you always dreamed of doing and doing it. You're never too old to take a risk, to take a chance to try something new, to challenge your mind, to exercise the neurons in your brain, to do that neuroplasticity thing, to challenge your mind and create new information, new knowledge, new neural pathways, to, as I was talking about at the beginning this morning, when I completely and totally fumbled the beginning of this Facebook live presentation. It's learning. <laughs> We've talked about the letter R for resilience and resolve and the letter E for engagement. Uh, my message this morning as a setup actually goes to tomorrow's letter, the letter S, which is actually two S's, selfless service, or you can just say 
service. I like selfless service because that takes it to the level where the service you're providing falls into the category of what Zig Ziglar said. This is not an exact quote, but Zig said, you will always get what you want in life as long as you help other people get what they want in life. To do that, you've got to sometimes set yourself aside and your needs aside. And you need to put your service in helping them achieve their needs. And what's interesting is that the payoff is definitely not just about possibly a monetary payoff or a material payoff. There's a bigger payoff in that. And I'll talk about that tomorrow and why that can be sometimes the greatest, most exhilarating rush of your average day is the idea of watching other people have incredible success because you were a selfless servant. Uh, but that, that again is a labor of love. It's a labor that has joy shot through and through. And the other part of that, that I was saying that has nothing to do with material or monetary gain is what it does here. It's great when you can rejoice in your heart that you had a hand in helping someone be successful. I will not in any way, form, shape, or fashion question the fact that on the day that Darren LaCroix at the World Championship of Public Speaking back in the early 2000s won that world championship, that one of the first people that was at his side with Darren's mom and dad was past world champion Mark Brown. Mark didn't have to be there, but Mark was a selfless servant. He coached, he mentored, he guided, he insisted that Darren do things a specific way in order to accomplish success. Darren did that, but Darren did not travel that journey alone. You don't travel your journey alone if you're connected with people. But here's the thing. If you truly want to make your labors of love rewarding, put yourself on the road and travel with others. Don't stand behind them. Don't get in front of them. This is not about leading or following. This is about coming up alongside in their labor sharing the load, picking up some of the pieces, and if they stumble, being right there with them at their side to either grab them so they don't fall completely down, but if they do fall completely down, help them get back up, dust them off, check for damage, and then help them get going again. Be sure that they don't get discouraged and want to quit. And per chance, if something hits and you get knocked off into the weeds and off onto the shoulder or even down in the ditch, help them get back up on the path. This is a labor of love. It's, a, it's your gift. And if you think about it, I believe you could find today, if you just sit down for a few minutes and wrote out a list, I believe you could write down a handful of names of people that have made a very positive impact in your life, and they have labored on your behalf. And I'm telling you, think outside of family for a few minutes. Yes, I had great parents. They were a work in progress. They didn't always get it right, but my parents never, never, never lacked for the one thing that was most important in my life, and that was a total unconditional love. And they taught me that unconditional love, not just as to how they did it for me, but also watching them and how they unconditionally loved one another. That type of teaching was important to me because that brought me through my life with my wife. And we had that unconditional love for each other, even though we went through a lot of hard times together. But the point was, it was a road we traveled together and not a road that we traveled on separate routes. The same is true in life with people. As you travel the road in the labors that you go through, understand that labor is not or doesn't have to be, honestly, drudgery. Labor can be intensive and labor can be hard work and labor sometimes can be frustrating and there will be failures. There will be shortcomings. There'll be disappointments. You won't always finish on schedule. 
But the truth is, if you love what you're doing, and if you love the people that you're doing it with, and you love watching people also doing what they do well, and being a part of helping them to do it even better, one person's success feeds another person's success, and that success feeds back to you who gave the success. It's a it's a never-ending cycle. It's a perpetual thing. It's kind of like that circle we talk about. It's unending because as long as you give, you're going to get. As long as you give, you're going to get. The truth is, in the universal law of sowing and reaping, you are going to reap what you sow. So think about what you're sowing right now. You can't do anything about what you've sowed already. I've learned very much the experience of when I do and sow bad things, bad things come back to haunt me. And I've learned that you have to clean your message up but you're not going to get a pass and you're not going to get out of the problem. You're going to have to confront it one way or the other. And this is not being preachy. This is just what I've learned about life. There are certain things in the universal law of how it works that are uh, empirical. They don't change. They are literally, that's why we call them laws. And so if you're, if you're wanting to do something special, and you're in the process of doing your favorite thing that you like and the labors that you want to do. Find someone else who is doing the same thing in terms of wanting to do what they love to do. Come alongside them and let them know you want to collaborate with them, work with them, team with them, help them to be good, pat them on the back and do everything you can in that journey to help them be successful. Because if you want to get and have the success in your life that you desire, you will get exactly what you desire so long as you help others get what they desire as well. Unselfishness coupled with an actual gain personally sounds like an incongruity, but it's true. You get what you give. And sometimes you get even more than you ever expected because your first thought was to give first rather than to think about what's in it for me. So what are your labors of love on this Labor Day 2022? This is day six for me. The fifth day of the month of September 2022. Time flies when you're having fun. Literally. I'm John Morrow. Thank you for joining me today. Be blessed. Have a happy Labor Day with God's grace. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow to share with you as we talk about the letter S in resolve and the objectives of selfless service and how all that ties together in learning to see and do and notice more. But until then, thank you for joining me. Be blessed. Have a fantastic day and i will look forward again as i said by the grace of god to seeing you tomorrow please thank you for your feedback and also be sure to check out my youtube channel where i upload these videos so that you can watch them and subscribe and like them as well until then so long happy labor day <laughs>